Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. And well, it all started because I'm lazy. It's not my fault though. I mean, why should I be the one to do my own chores or cook my own food? That doesn't seem fair. Why settle for the bare minimum of adulting when I can go lower? So logically, the only possible conclusion I could arrive at was, if only I had a robot butler to do all of this for me. So let's build one. First step is to figure out how we're actually going to make the robot move, which I'm calling IO. And I think I have just a thing. For some people, retail therapy means buying cute clothes or fancy jewelry. For me, it means gambling on random components I bought off of AliExpress. And one time, I ended up picking up a bunch of these actuators. So let's see if we can get them to move. Now, even though these are technically servos, compared to RC servos that you may be more familiar with, they couldn't be any more different. From their performance, to the type of motor they use inside, to how they communicate, there's a lot we can go over, but the one difference I want to highlight is how they keep track of their position. You see, with your normal RC servo, it knows where it's at at all times. Even if you cut off power and turn the servo by hand, it still knows, which is great. This is called absolute positioning. That's not the case with these actuators. While they're good at keeping track of how far they move, they don't have a frame of reference for it. Imagine you're blindfolded and you move 10 steps forward and then 5 steps back. Now hopefully, you should know that you're 5 steps in front of where you started, right? But that's about it. Without knowing where your starting location is, it could be 5 steps from your couch, or 5 steps from an apology video. So we need to give the actuators a reference point. Basically, moving the motor to a certain spot that we can detect, and have the actuator base all of its movements from. This is called homing. To do this, we could use something like a limit switch or a hall effect sensor, but why complicate things if we don't have to? Instead, let's just tell the motor to keep spinning until it starts using a lot of power. Then you know you hit the limit, which can be used as the home position. Cool, now that we can home and move these motors around, let's build some arms out of them. After a couple hours of printing, we should have everything we need here to start assembling. Now, IO's arms have a pretty simple design, powered by four of these actuators. Two for the shoulder, one for this upper arm twisting motion, and one for the elbow. Four degrees of freedom may seem low, at least compared to some of the other designs out there, but I'm pretty confident it'll be enough for what I want IO to do. Keep in mind this doesn't include any for the wrist or hands. What I am a bit worried about is how these 3D prints are going to hold up. Like I don't think they'll break with just arms moving around, but a hard crash or heavy payload could do the trick. Now I could machine them out of metal, or more accurately pay someone else to do it, but who knows, maybe the prints end up being stronger than I think. Anyways, now that we have one arm assembled, to make the other arm, we can just rewatch this section again, but mirror it this time. After a couple hours of printing, we should have everything we need here. With both arms assembled and hooked up to this test stand I built off camera, it's time to wire them up. It ain't pretty, but it'll get the job done. What's important is that everything's hooked up and the cables don't snag when the joints rotate. Most of the time. I even did the smart thing for once and double checked my handiwork with the multimeter. So now we can hook up IO to power without worrying about anything blowing up. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, do you make it down? Yeah, I think I can do that. Alright, first let's get the left arm out. That? It's something like that. Oh shit, wrong way. Oh shit, no, we did it. Move that away first, and there. It's just that easy. Me? All right, clearly controlling aisle like this just isn't gonna cut it. We need to find a better way. Something that'll let us move the arms more naturally and with multiple joints at once. Which is why I built this. No, it's not a bomb vest, no matter what the agents outside my door might say. It's a wearable tele-op setup for IO. It's basically just a miniaturized version of those arms with the same joint configuration. Two in the shoulder, one for the upper arm, and one for the elbow. Now when I move these arms around, the microcontroller on board reads the position of each joint, does a bit of processing, and then sends those joint positions over to IO's brain, which is this box here. After doing a bit of processing of its own, IO's brain translates the joint positions into specific motor commands and sends them to a microcontroller on board IO. This one acts as the motor controller for the arms and is what directly communicates with the individual actuators via CAN bus. And now, I can dab properly. Fuck. And now I can dab properly. Nice. With both arms up and running, you may be wondering, what about the hands? 
While my original plan was to build Isle's arms and hands together in this video, probably designing something on the simpler end, like a gripper. But then I came across this newest article, and I knew simple just wasn't going to cut it. So don't worry, I'm still building Io some hands, but they're just not quite ready yet. But even without hands, Io's already been helping out around the house. Here's just a taste of Io's potential. Io as Coat Rack Io as Live Music Io as A Teen Escaping from Reality Io as a maid cutting you fruit. Now, if that doesn't make you want your own Io, I don't know what will. All it takes is a simple quarter million dollar non-refundable deposit. And some other small stuff in the fine print, like your legal obligation to subscribe and stay tuned for upcoming developments on IO. After all, there's still so much left to work on. And even beyond the hardware, there's also IO smarts to deal with. But that can wait. If these multi-million dollar companies can promise AI, and then get away with paying people in third world countries to teleop their robots inside people's homes, then so can I. Alright, well that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, subscribe if you haven't already, or else. Bye!